Um, so I'm going through 2014's uh, final herb test for matric level. Um, and yeah, we, we went through slightly differently now um, than previous years. So we, we're a bit further ahead on this component. But now, also a couple of things that will change is this was a very much an object-oriented approach that I set this test. And now uh, it's looking like we're going to be moving where there's going to be more algorithms and a couple of other things like that. But in this case, we're looking at a scenario where I've given very, very specific details of a scenario. And then you're basically asked uh, to then design an application for that. And in this case, it's saying that for each vehicle that Joe deals, he needs to keep track of the make model, etc. So we can already start looking at this and understand that as far as an entity is concerned, we have a vehicle and we have, if you will, fields of make, model, year, and price. So that's already one sort of entity that we can keep track of there. We also need to keep track of the owner. So now if we take a look at their owner, would probably be another entity with fields of full name. Um, so you, if, I don't know if you guys can notice, but I'm, I'm italicing fields and I'm uh, underlining uh, just because I can. Um, so I've already, uh, we've kind of seen that and it's tax reference number. Okay, so uh, those are the fields that we're going to need. And he says once the car is sold, it will retain same information. Let me just pause the video quickly. What you'll notice is that um, so it says here now a car will sold will retain information such as the following. So now we've got the idea that when a car is sold, so in some ways sold could be your um, another field. I'm, I'm guessing here, I actually haven't gone through the questions, but I'm already just trying to identify the pre price at which the car was purchased for. So that's kind of something there, as well as the purchaser, purchases, full name, ID number, etc. Now, they were not very happy. Uh, da, da, da. So there's fields here. I'm not going to italic all of those, so I'm getting uh, lazy now. Um, and you guys get the idea. Uh, Joe Swindle takes 10% of the, the price of each field. Okay, so that's a, when you can do something like that, it's a, what's called a derived field. In other words, we do not store it, but it is something that can be calculated. Does that make sense? But you potentially might store the percentage that in which uh, the commission is taken. Do, do you guys get that? So you potentially would store the percentage somewhere so that you could update that at a later stage, but you, you might not store that. He wants to be able to query any month and the, be given the total profit that made that month. Okay. He also wants to be able to make the difference between the asking price and the actual price for which the vehicles were sold. Okay, so we need to know that that, that is separated. So now we move down. Let's get to the question. He says, you already have a person class from another program created and you plan on reusing it. And remember, with a, an idea of a person class, with regards to a, a inheritance, inheritance allows you to take the exact same details and potentially add some more information to that. Draw up a U UML diagram containing the entity class behind the solution. You do not need um, the manager or UE class. You do need to include the person in your class solution, but do not need to list the fields or attributes. Inheritance should be used and possible allow optimal memory usage. Only list the fully parameterized constructor, one setter, one getter for each class. Okay, so this is quite a large question. It's asking us for a whole bunch of um, uh, the diagrams to draw this. So let, let's try to solve this. Um, I'm going to open up a, a new document here uh, just so we can start structuring it there. Um, this is actually quicker in pen and paper with drawing, but uh, it should be okay. So the first thing we know is we've got the existing person class. I'm actually just going to copy this because we do know we've got this person class here, and that is going to be existing. Um, and for some reason, the, the <laughs> uh, let me get it. pause the video quickly. Down, firstly, a few things if we're taking a look at the scenario directly. So um, I'm not sure if my screen record is going to fit in both. You know, I'm busy uh, trying to sort out some payment issues with uh, what do you, what do you? Anyway, now, if we go back to the scenario, we take a look at there. We know we're going to need classes. So if we go here, we just, I'm just going to literally list, damn it, I'm, uh, we need a vehicle. We need a owner. An owner has information. What owner information do we have? So let's just start listing these down. Full name, ID number, sell. So technically, if we take a look at owner, owner currently is pretty much just a um, 
is a person, isn't it? So please check your recording of the whole screen. No, no. It looks like it's only recording half. Yeah, it's, it's only it, it, where it's cutting off. It's cutting off uh, where my mouse is going now, and that's okay because it will show the this part here. Um, but yeah, I do hear you that we shouldn't have that there. But if we take a look at this, owner is a full name ID cell. That is already the person, isn't it? So, so far in my owner, we're looking at here as far as the fields are. Okay, with the vehicle, what fields have we listed there? We've got make, comma, if you scroll more to the side, make, year, and um, and the last one was asking price. So asking, okay, so what I'm doing is I'm identifying the different entities or different uh, objects I have in this. So here's cell, and now all of this so far of the person is currently what person is. The only difference is, is now we also need his tax reference number. So here we would also include a tax ref. And I'm just going to put in brackets here just so that we can clearly distinguish that for my owner, all of this is contained with my person class. Do you guys get that? Mm. Now, if I go further down and I scroll to, uh, we now have um, a car. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm going mad. It says once a car is sold, so there's information with regards to sold, and it would need to retain the same information Once a car is sold, we need to retain the same information as well as the price the car was purchased for. Okay, so now this is quite interesting. It's saying that once a car is sold, it needs to retain the same information as well as information that it's working for. So when a car is sold, we would need to go, okay, asking price as well as how much um, uh, was actually sold for. So now we've got a situation where all of these are the same as vehicle, but now we have an additional field of sold for. So this vehicle has now been sold, and it's got an additional field in there. Uh, we could potentially just include that in here and keep it at zero, but and put a boolean and stuff like that. But I think it, it makes more sense to here. So uh, uh, I'm going to just put it in square brackets. This is a vehicle. So we've taken on attributes of vehicle with an additional sold for. This is taken on attributes of person with the then needs an additional of tax reference. And now we've got another one called purchases, full name, ID number, cell, etc. So now if we go to we need to store a purchaser, and this will have um, full name, comma ID, comma cell. All of that is part of the person class, so we don't need to re invent that because that already exists in the parent but then it has included in it it has um, whether or not they were happy with the service they received from the sale agent okay but now they're talking about a sale agent and um, that's a bit interesting okay so now I'm happy and that would obviously be a boolean data type Okay, so so far we've picked up vehicle, owner, sold, and purchaser. Now, potentially with the sold, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I missed something up here as well as the following. The price the car was sold for and the date of the sale must be kept. Okay, so I also forgot the date. So sold for and date of sale. Potentially because of something that was mentioned earlier, but I, I didn't specifically say that. So we also need date of sale. Um, so if you guys followed that we're picking up the, the, the different entities in the system, the one thing that I, d I didn't like and I regret maybe stating this is here I said from the sales agent. Uh, I'm not happy with that because nowhere else have I mentioned the idea of a sales agent falling into this and needing to be kept track of. So potentially you could argue that you would need to keep track of the sales agent, in which case I'd add that probably to the vehicle who sold this. Um, and that would also be a person and whatnot. So potentially you could argue that this system would also require a sales agent because it was mentioned here. But um, I'm going to leave that out for now. Um, Joe Swindle Cars takes 10%. He wants to make a query for the month and the total. Okay, so that's fine. We need to make a difference between asking price and what he had sold for. So all of these three things we're able to receive from what we've got. Um, we've got enough fields. We've got what it was sold for compared to what the asking price was. 
we've got all of that. So these are the different fields that we need. So the first thing, let's take a look at person. Person is extended by owner and by purchaser. So now if we wanted to draw this, we would then go and we would go, okay, first thing, I'm just going to change my layout so that I can, okay, let me make this first, the screen that we're looking at. Um, I think that's inside the proper framework here. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change my layout to be uh, to be orientation landscape um, and, and bear with me and I'll, I'll explain why now. So we know person is going to be extended. So to do that we draw two arrows underneath it. Unfortunately this takes oh, ugly ass arrows but yes yeah, so be it. Um, I always get a little bit confused if it's drawn down or up but it, it, it receives from that class. We're going to get something that is receiving from there and our first class that is going to be receiving from there is going to be so I'm going to copy this person class and I'm going to paste it down here. Well hello. Let's just put it all the way up, up there. And um, this person class, which has now lost the person heading thingy. Whoa no. I'm making a mess up of this. Okay, um, so the person class is going to be extended. Yo, okay, my word skills are slacking right now. If we scroll down, our person class is extended by our owner. So we're going to have this as being our owner class. I'm just going to central on that. Uh, do you guys get that? And then it is also going to be extended by our purchases class. So we've got owner and purchaser extending the person because both of them are people. The difference is, is that you're just going to have to now. So already because the extend person, owner already has all these fields so we do not need to reiterate that. So I, we do not need to restate that it's got these fields because we know it's already got these fields. And same thing with these methods. These methods aren't going to be the same. So, yeah, it's looking a bit uh, ugly right now, but we'll fix it now. Whoa, hello, stupid word. Don't do this to me. Okay, so firstly, the owner, the only field that's going to be added to the owner is the tax reference. Now, if you look at the tax reference on there, the tax reference number is 1742 forward slash 01321. Because it's got the forward slashes there, it is not a numerical field, it will be a text. So it is a string field. So you would go there, tax number, and we will call that, that it will be a string. We would then also have no other fields, but we would then have the constructor. So our constructor would be owner. Now our default constructor, it asks us in the question, it states that it requires fully parameterized constructor should only list the fully parameterized constructor okay so I do not need the default constructor one setter one getter and any additional methods required to meet the object objections <laughs> the objectives set my English is good there okay so we want our fully parameterized constructor now, is this our fully parameterized constructor? Is that my fully parameterized constructor? No, Why not? Yes, we need the inherited values as well. So not we don't just need that, but we also need all this information as well up here. So we don't just need tax number, we also need all of these plus the tax number. Now I've put it that order around, I mean it doesn't really matter. So we don't just need that, we need all of them plus that. Um, do you guys follow that? So that's my fully parameterized constructor here. Now, what else do we need? If we take a look at this, it says it doesn't, okay, we need one setter and one getter. So in this case, our setter would be um, plus, what the hell is going on here? Plus, Freaking me out, man. You have to exit layout options, so. Go away. Alright, um, plus uh, get tax. And that would return a string. Now, setter would be plus 
set tax number and that would receive in <clears throat> done. Okay, so that's the setters and getters. It says also all methods to fulfill the criteria. And um, we'll get back to that because first let's just make sure our entities have everything. And our purchaser um, has an additional information of um, if we go back down to my my planning over here, our purchaser has happy. So that would have a boolean. So this would have a negative happy, and we can make that a boolean. Yes or no. We're happy with the service. It's a car sales place. After we they sell cars, they just ignore them anyway, so probably not happy. Anyway, plus um, in this case again, same thing. Um, are you guys following this? So we would include all the fields of my parents, which would be those over here. So we would include all the fields of my parent. Mm. Work, you stupid thing. <clears throat> yeah. So you would include all the fields of your parents. Control C, Control V, and you would include the additional field. Um, the billions of the small b normally, but yeah, not bad. Oh, yeah. So that would be our fully parameterized constructor. We would then need a, a setter. Now, for a getter, for happy, or in this case it's boolean, it actually is happy. A get is for how to get every other data type, but for boolean, a getter is called is. Is happy. True or false. Um, and that would determine what it is. And then plus set happy, and that would receive then um, happy boolean. Okay. So setters and getters are done for my person class. But now, We've got another set of instances, and this is the vehicle. We've got a vehicle and then the sold vehicle. So the same thing is going to happen now. We're going to follow the same sort of structure, but now the difference is instead of doing this whole person over here, we're going to be doing vehicle. So I could potentially, depending on how, how wide this is, is just created on the right-hand side here, um, but I'm worried I'll run out of space. So I'm just going to literally put it over here. And all I'm doing is I'm copying and pasting the person layout. Whoa, freaking me out, man. And I'm just going to use this person layout, um, which should hopefully be, yeah, okay. And I'm going to make this into vehicle. And our vehicle would have fields make. So what data type would make be? Make would be a string. What data type would uh, year be? That would probably be an integer. Asking price would also be. I'm, I'm, I'm not really keeping well to naming conventions here because there should be a um, small case here. Okay, now on from there, we've, we've called that. And now we would need to create our fully parameterized constructor. Our fully parameterized constructor would have the same name as my. Um, the same name as my uh, class, we would then receive through the make string, we would receive through the year as an int, we would receive through the asking price as an int, and we would then add on there a, um, we need a getter, so get, it only asked for one, so if we call this get make, that would return a string, that's not how you spell string, So we've got the requirements of the vehicle, now we need to extend it for our um, sold. It extends the above, so we're just going to literally draw an arrow to indicate that uh, this has been extended um, from there. So we're just going to draw an arrow up to show that it's extended, make it a bit thicker so it looks prettier. And then in our sold, we're literally just going to add the field sold for. And this would be an int. We are literally going to then, um, for our sold uh, constructor, we would receive the same and including uh, int sold for int. So we're just adding the additional fields there. We would then create our getter and setter. We would have get uh, sold for which would return an integer value. We would then have plus uh, set sold for, 
which would receive sold for that would be an integer. Okay, so these are methods that we require just to get this to work. But now the problem is we need to also make it so that it would achieve these features that we, we, we were set out in the scenario. Because one, we need to get 10% from the sale price of each car. So we need to find out on what, how much uh, the profit the cars will make. Now, where do you think, we, which class would we find that out on? So we're trying to find out um, how much money Joe Swindle cars will take as far as profit is concerned or uh, profit of the car or commission. So where do you think we would add the commission field? method guys where would we add that we need to create a method to determine the amounts of commission we would take in which class would we add this method because remember in encapsulation methods must pertain to the entity so you always create them in the entity it's pertaining it would have to be in sold because this is where you have the information you've sold the vehicle what was your commission of that sale so inside here you would create an additional method and unfortunately uh, this is getting pear shaped but so be it so we'd have a different method and this method would be plus get commission because this has got all the fields required. It's got the sold for. It's got the amount that was that. Uh, so the sold for we just need five, ten percent of that. So then this would just return an integer. So get commission would be in here. Next part of the question says he also wants to be able to query the month and be given the total profit for that month. Oof. Now. In, in, in regards to that, your query of the total profit that month would have to have the array of the, so it would need to be in the manager class. But in the instructions, it told us that we do not want us to create a manager class. It asks us um, just, you no know, need for a manager or UE classes. So we wouldn't need the method to actually physically calculate that. But the, the trick in this question is the fact that because it's encapsulation, it means that you need to have, um, you need an additional method in here. And the method that you need in here is a method to be able to determine only get uh, if it is that month that it was sold. Ooh, uh, I missed something, didn't I? What did I miss? Date of sale. So in here there should have been an additional field of um, date of sale and that should either be a data type of date and then you, in here you would need to have a method you could argue a couple ways. You could have a method called is in month, and that would receive through uh, int month. To explain that, and this would be a Boolean value that it would return. To explain that is you, you the criteria states that you want to find out all vehicles that are sold within a month. You want to find out the profit of all vehicles or the commission of all vehicles sold that month. So you have the commission field that will determine the mission, but you need a, a field that will determine if it is in that month or not. Because you always want to encapsulate it in the entity responsible for it. And in this case, it's the sold contains the date of sale. So you just go, is it in this month? Yes or no. So we'll go, if it's in this month, then return that. So the entity sold determines whether it's in the month you're looking at. Do you guys follow that? Okay, so literally, we've got the vehicle sold, we've got the method to achieve that. Okay, so, so far, if we look at the question paper, we can say, yes, we've got that, because we've now got a method that received that. Yes, we've got that, because sold now can determine whether it's in that month. So it says, he also needs to be able to determine the difference between the asking price and the actual price the vehicle was sold for. Again, this is also in the sold thing, because the asking price versus commission. So it's actually all of these methods to achieve these things are all inside the results. In this case, plus get diff, and then um, that would just return an integer value of the difference between the asking price and uh, the actual sold form. And that would do that. And that would all be all the methods required. So you've got your one, two, three, four, five classes, and each of these would be uh, to solve this problem laid out here. Now in your guys' patch, you would come up with this kind of scenario and then you would have to design a, a class structures for this. So this work test is a lot about helping out you out with regards to your pet design where you identify the different entities you require and you can also create it so that you can extend, uh, extend items to add more fields to them. Um, 
I'm going to quickly, I'm going to pause the video here. Um, the last part of this video I'm going to be skimming through because it doesn't require as much um, uh, not knowledge as it is more just uh, we, uh, uh, it's knowledge less in problem solving. Um, it's quite ironic that I actually started this test with problem solving and then moved on, but yeah. Okay, uh, so if we take a look at this, the second part asks, uh, what does the purpose of inheritance now? Okay, this should be the memo, so I don't know why I can't find any... Um, Okay, here's the memo down here. All right, so this is the, the solution there. They talk about the owner, the person, the fields, the vehicle, etc. Um, that's pretty much that done. Uh, so it goes to uh, what is the main purpose of inheritance? Um, code to be reused, blah, blah, blah. Encapsulation, everything pertaining to an, ob an entity or object is within the entity or object, and the fields are protected to make for easy use. How does information hiding differ? Information hiding is a te technique used to make a, um, but it is, does form part of it. Um, combining elements to create a large entity, the program. Blah, blah, blah. In if a solution requires inheritance, when you overload a method, when you would override it. Okay, so this is a big difference between overloading and overriding. Overloading is where a method has the same name, just different parameters. Overriding it is where the parent class has the same method as the child class. And then it means that when you call that method, it will not use the parent's class, it will use that child's class. So you're actually literally overriding um, the method that was there. Polymorphism is the idea of a shape taking on the attributes of another shape to create multiple different forms. Um, and that's the idea of inheritance. Here with the inspector, etc., it's asking the idea that um, here, here they, they talk about create the constructor method, and you'll notice there that they created here an idea of create. Um, this could also just be said inspector, and the reason why they said create is because they were within Delphi. Um, but either or, uh, the concept there is that you know how to create the constructor for that. Um, a list to access the methods easy enough. Explain the purpose of declaring is trustworthy as private. Um, and that's quite interesting is to, is to protect it from and to try and make it simpler. Often the reason why you hide stuff is so that it looks simpler. You don't have to know everything in and outs and workings of a class. You might just want to know a little bit. And then they talk to you about pseudo pseudocode. And this is a part that uh, I'm actually going to go into in more detail. Um, so I'm going to leave it from this video. Um, but it is a concept that we need to start uh, covering a bit better. And this is the idea of using algorithms to solve it. I'm actually going to go through past final exams to cover this a bit better than um, than through this work test. Okay, goodbye.